What does the Lord require of you but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God? Those words from Micah now hold a prominent place at the First United Methodist Church Chicago Temple. There's a special story behind the verse and how it relates to youth ministry at the church. To learn more, we welcome Reverend Cheryl McGreeny, a United Methodist Deacon and Chair of the National Depression and Bipolar Support Alliance. And we also welcome Jordan Harper, Director of Youth Ministries at Chicago Temple. And Avalardo Rivera, a junior at Whitney Young High School and a member of Chicago Temple's youth group. Thanks to you all for being here today. Cheryl, so the temple has this new memorial plaque yes. for your son, Dan. Yes. Tell us a little bit about how that came to be and how you chose the verse. Well, um, Dan, uh, Dan's life really was all about um, being there for his friends and about um, listening and helping people and just really caring so much about the world. And when he passed away um, in 2011, and uh, we had his memorial service at Chicago Temple, of course. Um, we chose this verse, you know, for his service, and we wanted to have this um, verse put into a plaque um, in a public space, you know, in, in the temple. Um, and uh, the story behind Dan's passing was that um, he lived with bipolar disorder. And uh, really uh, just, you know, every mother says their son's brilliant. Well, he was very brilliant, I have to say. We believe you. Yes. Absolutely. And, and he was at University of Iowa and um, came and told us he needed to take a mental health um, semester off. And so he did and really suffered with uh, some depression, severe panic attacks. And um, we um, were able to get him some help with doctors and really was doing just so, so very well. Um, but he lost his life mm. on June 6, 2011. And out of that, we've really um, have taken it on as a family mission to help raise awareness and, um, and to help say, you know, here's a beautiful young life. And, and this is how we hope people will be in the world, especially who are young, young people. And so the plaque is uh, placed in the narthex. And it's, um, of course, the temple is a public building in addition to being a church. Right, right downtown. Right downtown. And so hundreds of people see it every day. And uh, our hope is that people who walk by, who um, maybe, you know, don't even have a particular faith that they claim, would see that and find that this is a way that they can be part of um, living out who they are as, as a human being and perhaps come to faith in some way. Okay. Or people of any faith could say, oh, this is really my reminder of who I need to be and what I need to be about as I go home for the day or as I come in for the day. And just to have that be a statement of this is the mission of, of the church. And so Dan being 23, I hope really that's an inspiration to young people. Cheryl, tell us a story about Dan that helps us to understand yeah. how this first exemplifies who he was? Well, when we were planning um, Dan's service, um, of course, we talked to his friends. And uh, one of the stories that we were told that, of course, we did not know anything about was that Dan would buy blankets um, in the winter and take them to what we call in the city, of course, Lower Lower Wacker, where many of our persons without homes live, by himself and give out the blankets. And so that really inspired inspired this verse and we could just picture my husband and I and my other son John we could just picture Dan you know down there he had a lot of tattoos he had a little scruffy beard you know just hanging out and so he was that was the perfect image and this verse just fits so wonderfully absolutely and, and being the church in a way people probably don't imagine the church exactly that's fabulous yeah. thank you for sharing well and what a tragic loss for you and yet Dan's life is still impacting people absolutely yeah yeah. Jordan, how does this verse from Micah relate to what you're doing in youth ministry at the temple? Yeah, um, I think this is probably the verse that, that captures what we're doing the most. Um, we hear this verse, but before this verse comes in the book of Micah, um, the writer's talking about, you know, God's done all these things for me. What kind of offering can I bring? How can I possibly pay God back for everything? that God has done. And he starts by asking, can I bring, um, you know, a thousand sacrifices or can I bring my rams or do you need a burnt offering? And, and God says, no, I just need you to do justice and seek kindness and walk humbly with me. And 
anybody can do that. That doesn't take um, any kind of privilege. That doesn't take any amount of money or social status. Um, so I think the first part of that is it's a call that, that the temple and church in general is a place for anybody and everybody to know that God is uh, present with us and, and God loves us and then in return asks for us to go and spread that and to love other people. So um, with our youth ministry, that's, that's exactly what we try to do is go out into the world and show people why, mm -hmm. why and how God has changed us. And that's an interesting point, that anybody can do those things. So there's an inclusivity about mm -hmm. the invitation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, Ave, tell us about your life in church. It is exciting to have a uh, young person here to speak to that. Yeah, well, I mean, thank you for having us. Um, so, basically, in church, I, I, I have been involved with a lot of things. Church has been a very big part of my life ever since I was little. I was basically born into the Methodist Church. Okay. Um, and... It, at the Chicago Temple in general, I am part of the youth ministry. I am also in the chamber orchestra. Uh, I play violin, um, so I do I do a lot of things at the temple. And does this verse speak to some of the things that you do? Um, definitely, uh, especially the seek justice um, aspect of it. I am very involved with the Chicago Students Union, and you know we we do a lot of social justice. Cheryl, thinking back to when you were a teenager, and when maybe you would have mm -hmm. been in Ave's seat. Yeah. How has your faith changed mm. and developed since your teen years? Well, I will say, um, if it has, since my um, confirmation class, mm. <laughs> eighth grade, United Methodist, um, I will have to say I feel like it's grown just kind of leaps, you know, leaps and bounds. Confirmation for me was really kind of that 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 claiming, you know, of my faith and just kind of springboarded, you know, from from there. And um, we have such a good connection around public school education. Um, I started my uh, uh, education, college education, as a uh, training for public school teacher. All right. I spent five years teaching uh, public school. And uh, really that is just so key to what I see my own mission in the churches has always been around Christian education and connecting uh, religious education with what we're doing out in the world mm -hmm. so that a person doesn't just come into a Bible study, study uh, the scripture in isolation, but has their life transformed, okay. you know, in some way. And so through really engaging the Bible my whole life um, and going to seminary, uh, just have really found such a, a deeper faith that really has helped me be grounded and rooted in all of the twists and turns of life, especially with the passing of our son, you know, really was central and core in, in being, being able to go on that healing journey. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Well, I'm glad that it was that for you. Absolutely. Tell me a little bit about what the youth do at your youth group, how you teach them this, how they experience this. Sure. Um, I think just by the nature of where our church is located, um, it is very hard to come from wherever you live throughout Chicagoland to the temple and not pass buildings, people, communities um, that desperately need justice. And so not only do we want to build up a community at the temple and in our youth ministry um, with those of us who are inside the church, but it necessarily has to expand and, and bring justice and um, just love the community that we are in by nature of that. Um, we're still really putting this ministry together. It's, okay. it's a brand new kind of project. Um, very exciting times for the church. Um, so some of the ways, clearly education is a huge deal for us. Right, particularly in the city right now. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, and so we've talked a lot about how can we you know, help the Chicago Students Union how can we help schools that need tutors? Um, how can our kids go back into their communities, to their schools all across the city and be um, good examples of what it means to live out um, loving other people? Thank you, Cheryl and You're Jordan welcome. and Ave for being here today. I'm Polly Toner for Different Drummers and the Greater Chicago Broadcast Ministries. Keep the faith. <laughs>